I believe in independence 100 percent. Independence for me just means that I feel like I'm in the able-bodied world and not relying on other people for things. It's just liberating. It just makes me feel good. It makes me feel like I can do more and more and more and do anything I want. Hi, I'm Erica, uh, Erica Perry. I um, am 34 years old. I have Miller's syndrome, or we could call it the long name, which is post-axial acrofacial dystosis. Um, and that just basically means that my body is different to everyone else. And everyone's got a different body. Mine's just a little bit extra different. Um, so I'm missing fingers and I'm missing toes. Uh, um, got a few extra bits and pieces that other people might not have. Uh, I wear hearing aids, I wear glasses, and so basically it just affects my outward appearance. I've been asked to speak at a lead conference, so it's basically the up and coming young leaders and the theme was actually, it's what's on the inside that counts. They thought, well, I'd be perfect for that because I'm, that's my motto, is what's on the inside that counts. It's not the outside that matters, it's what you do on the inside that matters. I'm a little bit nervous, so I'm a bit worried that I might go over time or something like that, but I, I don't know, I've hopefully I've got a few good pointers. I've been told that there's going to be lots of kids, like around 600 kids or something. It would be the biggest event I've ever spoken at. I've had over 40 surgeries, uh, mostly to correct my eyes. My eyes wouldn't shut as a baby and they had like a real round, they were like really round. With all the surgeries and stuff, they're more proper shape. Who gets to go first? Um, I've lived in New Plymouth all my life with my mum and my dad and my brother. Me and my brother are the only two people in Australasia that we know of with my syndrome. Um, cause it's quite rare, there's only about 40 people worldwide. Are you allowed to cheat? You know, I came from all the way from the States and of course Morris is here from New Zealand and met fell in love, married, and then ended up having um, recessive genetic um, condition, so. I don't know what the odds are, but they're pretty. Pretty rare. <laughs> <laughs> Six years ago, I was still living at home, and I had the thought that I really wanted to go flatting or find a flat for myself. I just need to get out and I need to get out on my own and I need to do things myself now because I wasn't being truly independent until I got my own flat. My mum, being a social worker, works at the hospital. She had an email come through through a company, Barrett Home Trust, and they said, well, there's a one-bedroom unit available in Inglewood. So I called the lady up and I said, I'm really interested in this house. And she goes, oh, well, you're the first person that called me. We'll make an appointment, you can come and have a look at it. So I ended up six months later in, in my own unit. Come on. It was so amazing. Suddenly I have a place that I can put things where I want to put them. I can make it my own. I love being on my own, I love being in my own house. It's actually unlike anything I ever imagined or dreamed. I'm hosting my parents for dinner tonight, so I'm actually buying ingredients for my family to make my family dinner. So I think I'm gonna make a quiche and I'll get some cooked chicken. Oh, my confidence has gone through the roof. I'm doing so much more on my own. 
I could do that when I lived at home, but I always had my parents just in the background. Thank you. See ya. And now I appreciate my family more because I can just go visit them or they can come and visit me. And I can tell them when they need to leave or they can tell me when I need to leave or I can just leave when I want to leave, you know, and I don't. I'm just accountable for myself. I'm not accountable to anybody else. I have to make sure my house is super tidy. Mum just lets me know if my house maybe isn't quite as clean as she thinks it should be. Hi, Erica. Hello, come on in. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, sweetheart. Hello. Oh. <laughs> She's just done really well. She's gone from strength to strength, living on her own. I go past here a bit, but she's never home. <laughs> so she tends to visit us more. She has her own life. She's a very um, busy, social person. And um, I honestly can't keep up with her and all that she's doing. <laughs> Yeah. Hmm. You just got it off the internet, did you? Um, yeah. Google. I have had my full license for nearly 10 years. So I've been driving for a really long time and I love the freedom of driving. Well, we're just actually on our way to um, a school in New Plymouth to pick up one of the charges I look after after school. Yeah. Cool. I really just love the way that kids look at me and um, see me as just a whole person. They don't see anything different about me especially if I've looked after them from real young. They're so much fun. It's not really a job, it's just playing. Having me come to see you is your favourite part of the day, isn't it? No? <laughs> what about... What, did you do anything at school? Did you play with any friends? Yeah. Do you want that? Oh, no, sorry, can't have it. You want that? <laughs> you want that? Do you want that? <laughs> All right. I did my level three childcare at the Yellow Castle in New Plymouth. I love children with all my heart and all my soul. When I was five, I, I wanted to look after children. So it's kind of something that I followed right through. <laughs> I always wanted to have a baby. I've always wanted to have a child. Friends of mine, their cat had kittens, and there was just this little wee being that was just looking up with me with blue eyes, and I was like, I'm not meant to have a cat, you know, and I didn't come up here to get a cat, but I just fell in love with her. Like, she just chose me. She's really special to me. I can't imagine life without her now. I filled that little need with having this cat. Is that good? 
two years ago, I got really sick. I had pretty much let myself go. Um, I kind of moved into this flat and I thought, ooh, I'm living on my own now. I can do what I want. I can eat what I want. Um, and I got to a point where I'd eaten too much uh, and I had no self-control and I got to the point where I was gotten really sick and ended up in hospital and I just thought, I think I'm going to need a wheelchair. That for me was a turning point. This is a woman who can do anything and I'm sitting here telling myself that I might need a wheelchair. And so that's kind of when my life like did a full 360 and changed. Two years ago, someone asked me what my next goal was. So my brain said, oh, let's run a half marathon. And then it slipped out of my mouth and I was like, oh, why did I say that? So I said it in front of people, so I had to follow through and run a half marathon. I'd gotten bronchitis, I'd gotten an ear infection. Everything was going wrong, I was so sick. I was fit and healthy before, but I obviously wasn't fit and healthy enough for me, and I just turned around and just, I was like, right, I'm not going to ring my mum, I'm going to go online and find a personal trainer instead. And so that's basically what I did. Like that? Yeah. I reckon it needs to be heavier. Erica came to me in the gym when I was working out one day and um, she wanted to get fit for running. Erica wanted to run um, a half marathon and I took it on as a challenge. One of the things that stood out for me with her was that she just needed to bring up her fitness. So yeah, it was more about getting fit and getting her strong and getting her used to moving properly like slightly less spring. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Because those orange ones were good, weren't they? But it was too... Too loose. Too loose. Okay. Yeah. You're doing well, you're doing good. He has been amazing. Like, there is not a single piece of equipment in the gym that he cannot adapt for me. There's so much adversity that's come from her, her life. You know, she's put up with a lot and She's progressed all the way through. And I think her finding um, health and fitness has, has been the key. Because um, despite who you are, you can build confidence within yourself just from this alone. Yeah, so your back's flat here. That's it. Better lift. There you go. Good girl. Good. He's made my confidence go from here to, like, <laughs> up there, like, completely amazing. I knew I had four hours before they would pack up and go. So I really don't want them to pack it up before I get there. So he, I said to him, I said, I need to do it in four hours. He was like, yep, we'll get you there in four hours. We'll do it. And so I just put in the work. I worked super hard. I did it four hours. Bang on the nose. Here we go, there we got uh, Gareth in there. Congratulations to Erica. Erica has finished the half marathon. Well done. It's an amazing achievement for someone who's only got like the size of a four year old's feet and missing toes. It would be tricky for anybody, but I had the mindset that I was going to do it. And if you have the right mindset, you can pretty much do anything you want to do. I get my kicks out of helping people achieve a goal, but for me it's more of an education thing. Like, I, as much as I like beasting people and pushing people through their limits, I really enjoy it when people, people get it. They understand why they're doing and, and what they're doing it for. But Erica is all about learning and I'm all about teaching and, and, and that's the spark. So we're going to do uh, a simple circuit, so we'll just keep it moving around nine stations. We're going to do pyramids today. So we're going to go 20 seconds work on each station before you have a minute rest. All right. And Erica is still to this day the only person that gets excited by a burpee. And that's why I like including her in the group sessions, because if I've got burpees, then all of a sudden the, the motivation from everybody else lifts, because if Erica's going to do it, then everybody has to kind of swallow their own throat and go for it. 
I really like how supportive the girls are and I like the social aspect, the laughter that we have, the fact that I get an extra workout. Um, I always came for more workouts. Um, and, you yeah, know, the girls are just really supportive and they encourage me to keep up. Oh, so damn too cold. <laughs> I just feel like I'm one with the girls, that I'm not the girl with the disability segregated into the disability class. Socialising is super important, so I love having groups that I can socialise with and just talk to and have a laugh with. Hopefully there's enough room. Oh, brother, nice. Is this all yeah, nice table? Table? Yeah. Huh? I'll be the first person to do it. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first group, and then I think we've just done our 45th park run. I never, ever, ever thought I would see the day where I was waking up and going out the door at 7.30 in the morning on a Saturday morning. I mean, who does that? I do it every Saturday without fail, unless I'm really, really sick or I'm away. I go and do parkrun, and it's amazing. And what I really like about parkrun is that you can run, you can walk, you can jog, you can wear a tutu, you can wear a onesie, you can do whatever you want. It's a real fun 2.5k there, 2.5k back. Erica talked to me about parkrun. When we first started doing it, it was about as much me supporting her. And then we just kind of, I think it's been a mutual supporting one another. We, we just really enjoy we it. We like it because it's not super competitive. And yeah. <laughs> it's not competitive, although Morris and I do. Um, we, we do encourage each other to try to go faster. And, and we talk about personal bests. <laughs> I spend a lot of time thinking and analysing and processing and listening and hearing and all the rest of it. But when I run, I don't have to be listening to anybody. I don't have to be processing anything. I don't have to be, I don't have to be doing anything. So that's actually my time where I switch off. I just run. I just want to run and just be free. And so it's really cool. I can run without needing anyone to help me. My own physical body is doing the running steps without needing to have anyone hold me up. And for me, that's a big thing. When I moved into here, I had to have someone come and wash my hair. That took away a lot of independence and it took away a lot of, what's the word? Dignity. Two years ago, I was at my FNMS conference, a uh, conference for my syndrome, and while I was there, we had like a group discussion about what helped us in life and what, you know, what we might need to help us in life. But the subject came up on hair washing and the tools that we could use to wash our hair. And I was like, wait, what, there's tools to wash our hair? And so one of the girls who has reasonably long hair had posted a picture of a tool that she used. And I was like, oh, I need that tool. So she went out and brought one and sent it to me. Now I've got this long-armed device and I just put the shampoo on it and it's got like a long arm so that I can use it to scrub my own hair. So I've been washing my own hair. I, I rang up my agency and said, I actually don't need anyone to come and wash my hair anymore. Can I cancel that service? That is the most liberating feeling you could ever have. I got my independence back on my hair washing and I've got some dignity back. And this is me on my first day of school. And I was very excited and I had to wear my school bag and off I walked. 
primary school I didn't really like because I got bullied a lot, teased a lot, and spent a lot of time in the bathrooms crying because I was teased. I come home saying switch schools, switch my schools, but I had to kind of suck it up and get through it. I remember one day from high school and um, there was these kids that used to walk home and um, I remember one day he said hi and he walked past and I said hi back and then he turned around and he yelled out, Ew, you're ugly. And so I actually turned around and said, oh, you're ugly back. And I just started to giggle and he was like, no, I'm not. And he turned around and ran off. But it just made me feel good that, you know, I could just not take it to heart, but just turn around and say, you're ugly, because, you know, he was ugly in a way by saying that to me. So I just kind of turned it back on its head and gave it back to him and didn't quite like it quite so much. I uh, really enjoy going into the schools uh, here in Taranaki. They've invited me in. When I was younger, I had kids, like, looking at me and going, oh, she's a monster and running away. And now I have kids waving to me and going, oh, I know that girl from my school. I feel like I've had a real positive influence on some of these kids. If I could just help one child to feel better about themselves if they're not feeling so good about themselves, it makes me feel good too. It makes me feel like I'm doing something good in the world. Taranaki, let's give a massive round of applause for Erica Perry. <laughs> Hi everyone. I think half of you in this room probably knows me. Can you put your hands up if you know me? If I've been to your class, if I've been to your school? Yeah, probably most of the room. I really like the theme of today's lead conference because that has been my motto right from when I could first talk. And my parents drummed it into me that it doesn't matter what you look like on the outside. It is what's on the inside that counts. If you have a kind heart, and, you have a, and your mind is doing what everyone else is doing, then it doesn't matter. Your body will just follow suit. But she's such an inspiration in terms of, and I, I guess inspiring, motivating, making them laugh. She's such a funny person. She, she, um, she tinges all of her, her stories and um, experiences with, with humour. And she's not afraid to have a laugh about things. I have a kitten, as you've just read. She's four, four months old, and she's very, very naughty. I leave a bathroom window open for her so that she can get in and out of the house. And, of course, being the bathroom, toilet paper. So I leave the toilet paper on the side of the window, and she jumps out and she decides, oh, this is a fun toy, and she knocks it out the window. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that you can't just stop going to the toilet because you can't be bothered to go get another roll of toilet paper. Right? You just wouldn't do that. So in life, you shouldn't do that either. You shouldn't just go, oh, I just can't do that, so I'm not going to do it ever again. You try and you try and you try again. And if it's something that you really want to do and your brain is telling you you want to do it, you keep working at it and you will soon succeed. I just speak about my day-to-day -day life, my independence, what's helped me, uh, if, if I've needed to, I bring in the bullying side of it. I think it's just important for them to know that they just need to just be kind to everybody and be kind to themselves. Be kind to themselves, be kind to everybody around them. I'm going to say three times, I'm going to count to three, and I want you to yell, I can, all right? So after the first one, you stop, and then I'll count to three again. I want you to say it louder. On the third time, I want you to say it so loud that your teachers have to block their ears. OK? Yeah. All right. Are we ready? One, two, three. I can. All right. We've got to do it louder. Who's ready? One, two, three. I think I'm going to have to turn my hearing aids off for the next one, all right? You guys are so loud. All right, are we ready? One, two, three. 
Thank you, Erica. Uh, I'd just like to say that it was really inspirational, and I, I reckon I can do anything from what you've showed us. Thanks. Thank you. One more round of applause for Eric Piri. Just more and more projects are coming to me and more and more like speaking and so many people have said maybe you should write a book but I'm kind of almost living my book. So it's a bit hard to write my book when I'm living my book but, but one day, who knows? I just like life, I like living, I like being alive. So that is kind of my drive to keep going. was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.